This is talking about Darwinism a bit. It's called unnatural selection. Human culture is a macro-organism with reproductive and sustaining characteristics common to the smallest micro-organisms. Viruses come in many forms and intensities. What happens to the amoeba that doesn't stand its ground and or expand? Survival to the fittest. Unnatural selection. So, this is touching upon part of my life philosophy uh, in which human culture can be seen as many, many, many levels of awareness up, but in, in many, many levels of agency up from microorganisms. But ultimately, we still need to reproduce. We're a life form. We still need to reproduce. And human culture, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of the conversation, in terms of where we have, how far we have come in terms of cognitive ability, where we're able to, you know have debate and discussion and have both sides of the discussion or all sides of the debate they all hold reason and credence in a scientific context and we can actually the not only that that's just one element of the human culture but also that human beings are organisms that reproduce and that, you know, have a survivalism tendency. So it goes for, it goes for, it, you know, since we are just, you know, biological organisms, you know, we might have high-minded sort of, you know, we might have, uh, 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 we might be in touch with the metaphysical in an intellectual sense, but in reality, it all kind of boils down to the same the same kind of system just extrapolated and made bigger and better and better and just billions of years of evolution uh, got us to this point and the conditions got us to this point. I call it unnatural selection. Sort of, it's sort of just a play on words, but there's there's some it it, it there's some there's some credence to it because this is a little bit a little bit twisted according to some uh, people's philosophies. Viruses come in many forms and intensities. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, human culture can be manipulated through many means. It can be expanded and reduced by uh, many different mechanisms. Uh, so, uh, viruses come in many forms and intensities. And when, you, when we're at the level of ta just talking, now that we've reached this level post physical violence now now the violence is all in in rhetoric and it's all in speech we have we have taken the conversation from the battlefields of um, the past and over time human culture has become much more philosophical and they've been able to look inward and outward and, and it's not been so much about you know faith but it's been about it's been about reason more so. Uh, that's my belief. I'm an optimist, I guess, because a lot of people seem to not understand this. Uh, so what happens to the amoeba that doesn't stand its ground? What happens to the amoeba that doesn't stand its ground and or expand? It gets crushed. That's the idea. It gets crushed. And it's not a good or bad thing necessarily, it's just that it gets crushed, you know. Um, the antidote to lies are the truth. Okay, so if you look at lies, we were just talking about lies with my last tweet, that was basically, you know, <laughs> tongue in cheek, but that tweet, but, you know, we were talking about how lies uh, survive and how they get, you know, perpetuated. 
and propagated. And, you know, you insert the truth, it's like a virus. It just, you, it just wipes out all, you know, that's why I say it's better to be pro-information and it's better to sort of uh, let all the information sit out there and then let there be a discussion and a debate about the credibility of that information and the credibility uh, of the arguments and the, you know, the math, the actual, you know, detailed information that um, really cuts to the nitty gritty, the crux of the discussion. Uh, so, Amoeba have to stand their ground. Stand your ground, okay? You're strong. You are strong. Stand your ground, all right? Whoever you are out there. I'm not sure if anybody will ever watch this, but if you watch it, stand your ground, you know? And know when it's appropriate to ask for more. But of course, you could learn all these things through studying negotiation and persuasion. Um, and maybe, uh, I don't know, it, it, it is something when you have lower self-esteem or you have, um, in the past, when I was a teenager, I actually believed that I had a bit of a, um, kind of an inferiority complex. Like, I always pushed myself very, very hard, and people would tell me, like, you're, you're doing a good job. That's, to be completely frank and honest with you, uh, I would say that I have received, this is literally true from my mentor in acting, uh, George McDonough and Rosemary McDonough, my mentors, uh, two of my mentors when I was uh, acting on stage and screen. Uh, you know, it turns out that it's not always great to feel constant guilt. I mean, this is obvious. It's not great to feel constant guilt, and it's not great if you're always pushing yourself so hard that it's unhealthy. There is a threshold for pushing yourself too hard. Um, but you still need to know, if you want to be successful, you need to stand your ground, and you need to you know, stand by who you are. And if you can't do that in a way that you find yourself credible, it's your job as a human being uh, to, to do what you can to, to sort of get to this place where truth, you know, where you believe your own truth, you know, uh, you, you want to, you want to, you want to believe in yourself because otherwise, you know, you're asking other people to believe in you. You don't even believe in yourself. It's, it's hard. And I know that we all have, there's many, you know, psychiatric conditions and there's many life conditions and conditioning that we've received through our upbringing and through life to this point that can make it much more difficult to accomplish, accomplish these things. I fully understand that. Uh, and, you know, I have seen firsthand the effects of depression and low self-worth. And, and believe me, it's, it's very difficult to come out on the other side in one piece. That's what I've observed. So, survival to the fittest. Stand your ground, and I, I, I know that I don't need to say that too many times because most people that I've encountered uh, are very strong people. And I'm talking to the people out there that don't believe in themselves and don't believe they can do anything they put their mind to. I know it sounds sort of cheesy, uh, but in reality, it, it, you know, positive energy, positive energy, positive, you know, you're not going to get this positivity from hitting the negative again and again and again. Constant criticism of yourself and others, constant criticism, everything is bad. You know, it's the more you put that into your brain and you run that information, that mindset through your brain pathways, the more you reinforce it, the stronger your confirmation bias that everything sucks in your life, you know, and it might suck. It might suck. And I'm not telling you that, that there's, there's cases, there are, there are definitely cases where it helps to sort of fall into, uh, kind of lean into the sadness a little bit, just a little bit, because you need to feel the melancholy. 
there's there is this dividing line that you might want to cross. Of course, you know. <sighs> I I said I wouldn't cry. 